Hello everyone, today I want to take a look at what's called the Immortal Draw. This game was played in 1872 by Carl Hamp and he played against Philip Mignet. Uh, this game was played over 100 years ago. As you'll see quickly out of the opening, there's not a lot of theory in and what white and black do both is very, very unique and something incredibly fascinating. Let's take a look at the game. We're also for the e4, e5, knight c3, trying to go for the Vienna Gambit. The next move is probably going to be f4 where White is just going to try to attack the center. Knight f3 could be a move. Bishop c4. These are all options. Black plays bishop c5. And the point is you're trying to discourage f4. Because if you do that, we can take the knight. And then go queen h4 check. Delivering a double attack. So here, Karl breaks one of the basic opening principles. And puts his knight on the side of the board. Now here, if you're black, you should just bring your bishop back. Because really, what is this knight doing on a4? It's kind of hard to understand. But in this position, black makes a mistake. Or we could say a dubious move. They play bishop f2. It takes back. Now queen check. The point is if we block the pawn, with our pawn rather, the queen will take and delivering a fork on our rook and knight, which we obviously don't want. Simply bringing our king forward is also no good because they go check. They're going to win our pawn and then win our knight. So white decided to play king e3. So black checks and we simply move our king over. Now black is going to immediately go for the attack, taking control of the center, which is a really precise move, hitting this pawn. If they take, then we lose the knight. And it's not like we can just simply defend the pawn, because if we do that, they just take, and they'll play bishop f5, winning our queen. White elects to run away. The point is that they could go king b3. They want to bring their knight back and quickly run away. Black plays knight a6, a very nice move, threatening a maiden one. And if you just simply take my knight, I'm going to take, I'm threatening check, I'm threatening this check. It's a pretty dangerous position. So white elects to play a3. The intention is to go knight c3 and then you bring your king back to safety. So black sacrifices their queen. Truly an outstanding move. The point is, obviously you don't want to run back because if you do that, you're going to be down material and you're going to have a weak king. So white takes. Now the key idea for black is to make sure the king does not run back. So knight c5 check, king b4, black plays a5 check. The point is, we want to make sure the king doesn't run away, and we don't want to waste time on simple moves like b6, because then white might get king safety with a4 and then king a3. So black plays a5. Now, going here doesn't really help, because they can just go check, and then now they can simply defend the knight, and we have to really be afraid of moves like bishop e6. So white takes the knight, black defends with knight e7. And the point is the king has no way of running back. And the threat is simple. If we play knight f3, then black can go check. And then this is mate. Game over. So white decides to distract black. They go check. The hope is that black goes c6. Because if you do that, then your king has two escape squares and the king is much safer. If you play bishop d7, that's good because you get a chance to trade pieces. But black obviously doesn't do that. They simply move their king over. The goal is this is a mate. Moving the bishop anywhere, let's say here, will result in the same mate as previously analyzed. So white plays bishop c6. The hope is that pawn takes. Because now my king is kind of safe because the knight is not going to be able to attack the king for at least a few moves. And this is really your only mate idea and white can stop it with a4. Black plays b6 check, which seems fine. We can go king b5 and then they take the bishop. The idea is that if you run away, I can go knight d4, stopping you from running. And these are two maiden one threats that you're not going to be able to stop. So white elects to take the free knight. And black finds here an outstanding move, a miraculous move, I would say. Bishop b7. Now the point is that you can't just take the bishop, because if you do that, black is going to play king d7, and then rook b8 is mate. Now you can give a spite check, but after king d6, this is going to be mate. Now you could sacrifice your queen but you don't survive for long. Black is going to be able to deliver a mate very soon. If king b5, and bishop a6, and this is what happened, and this is how the game ended in a draw. Now, if white plays king a4, trying to run to safety, black will just play bishop c4, and b5 is going to be mate. So that's why in this position, white and black just decided to repeat moves here, which is just outstanding. I mean, look at the position. White is up a queen and a knight for two pawns. However, king safety plays such a key role in this game, the material almost doesn't matter.
So there you go. That is what is called the Immortal Draw. This game, as played in 1872, is way over 100 years old and it still stands the test of time. People from all around the world love examining this game because it's such a fun game to look at where you can just run your king around and still be okay. Make sure to leave a comment down below to let me know what game you want me to look at next time. See you guys in the next video. Bye.